<laughs> we did it yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that was a few. <laughs> yeah. Did you watch the video? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. uh, no. So you're, you see, you're a little bit out of the loop now because we're in the middle of doing something. Anyways, write this down. So. I hope so. Yeah. Okay, write this down. So we don't have too, too much to do for this lesson. Oh, sorry. Uh, fission and fusion. Got this? Yep. Okay. Um, right, let's see now. Ah, that's okay. Uh, so anyway, before I talk about that, so far we've balanced equations. Um, something very similar to what you do in chemistry. Maybe even the, maybe the same? Same idea. The left and the right have to be balanced. But we haven't really talked about how these equations come about. So for example, last time we had uranium-235 plus one neutron made uh, barium and krypton, wasn't it? Uh, I can't remember, but um, what we're going to look at today is where these equations happen. How do you make the process that they're describing? Um, so firstly, a little bit... Uh, oh look, actually great! Funny enough, this is the, one I'm, the exact one I'm talking about. So here the equation was, if you remember from last time, uranium-235 plus one neutron, it made krypton plus barium plus three neutrons. And actually if we just very briefly open that up for those who weren't here and didn't look at the video. Mm, yeah, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, question number two was uranium plus a neutron, it made barium, krypton, three neutrons plus some energy. And it was our job yesterday to calculate the energy. Um, what do you have the answer there for what we got? Uh, the energy is 2.74 times 10 power minus. Piku joules. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, back to this one. Uh, so we've worked out the energy that you get from this process. So you can see from the graph, uh, the picture, what's happening. A neutron is fired at uranium-235. Then the uranium becomes unstable and it splits. It splits into krypton and it splits, uh, no sorry, kryptonite uh, and barium. And it also uh, releases three neutrons and some energy. So this is what's happening in the formula. A neutron is fired at the uranium. The uranium then is unstable and it breaks into two. So this breaking process uh, produces uh, kryptonite and barium and then three neutrons in the middle. And of course there's an energy that's released when this breaking happens. <coughs> yeah? Only you can split on electricity? No, no, no. It could be uh, other things as well. So it doesn't have to be a neutron to do this. Okay? So this is a picture of what's happening from yesterday. And this is an example of nuclear fission. Uh, so fission is a synonym for um, breaking. I would like you to draw this. Uh, it doesn't have to be as nice as this, but the process. Because it doesn't have the same catchy fusion and fission, you know, fusion and separation. But yeah. It doesn't have the same catchy ring to it. Anyways, you talk to your buddy Aimee about this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, did he? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that now. It was a recent, wasn't it? Uh, four days. Yeah, two days. <laughs> Four days ago. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
which we'll get to later. This one would be, yeah. Uh, we'll get to that later. uranium yeah Okay, you drew this? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know why in this picture I got that they didn't show the tree neutrons. I think they might have been simplifying it a bit. not really important. The important thing is the idea and the vocabulary. But also missing from the diagram of course is the barium and the krypton that's produced after the collision. Um, okay, continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, so um, yeah. how you can use this to make energy. So before you draw anything let me just um, explain the process here. Hmm? Oh yes, 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 it's picture day today. Now, um, there's one thing that's annoying me that's missing from this diagram which I'll have to tell you about, but everything else is on the diagram and it's a nice picture, so that's the reason I'm using it. So let me um, explain what is happening here. What's the reaction? It's a reactor, let me explain it, for making power, electricity. So, um. Do you see now um, the red rectangles on the left? It's marked uranium fuel elements. Yeah. Okay. So this is a um, piece of uranium. Now this uranium is unstable. So what happens is it breaks. And what does it break into? Barium and uh, krypton and tree, kryptonite and tree neutrons. These three neutrons hit more uranium and what happens? It repeats. You get barium, kryptonite, three neutrons and more energy. If you didn't stop this process it would continue until all the uranium is gone and has become barium and kryptonite and you just have lots of energy. Boom. So that uranium is unstable. To make it stable around the uranium, can you see um, something called the um, control rod? Yeah. yeah. Now the control rod is like um, a barrier. It goes over the uranium. So if you picture like um, this is the uranium fuel cell, the control rod is over the um, uranium and it just goes up and down over it. Depends on how much energy you want. Okay. So if you don't want any energy, you put the control rod all the way down, 
and it covers up the uranium. The control rod is made of a material like uh, carbon, I think, yeah? And the reason carbon is used is because carbon can absorb the neutrons and stop the process. So if you want full power, you put the control rod up the top and all the activity takes place. One sec. And then if you want no power, you put the control rod all the way over the uranium and all the neutrons that are released are absorbed by the carbon. So it, it's like um, you move the control rod for how much nuclear reaction activity you want. Yes? Picture there's a two control rod, two, two. Oh yeah, but it's not a perfect picture. The control rod, uh, usually the control rods, they don't have to cover it completely. I think they just need to go in between the fuel rods. But it doesn't matter. They just need to be uh, like a sponge, or you know, a sponge to absorb the neutrons. So they just need to be around the uh, fuel rods. Now, um, what's missing from the diagram is um, the to be to be actually a bit more accurate, which is what's missing from the diagram. Technically, the control rod is the name for the top of the rod. Uh, the, like the handle that you pull up and down. Whereas the part that actually actually goes over the fuel rod is not called the control rod, it's called the moderator. So what you're missing from the picture, which maybe I'll add it in, is the control rod is actually the top. The part that you touch with your hand, you know, you can lift it up or down. It's outside of this. It's outside of this. Yeah, the control rod really sticks up the very top. Do you know what I mean? You know, like control, you know, like the control something, like a verb. So control rod as a noun is like a switch. So in the control room, they would have the rods that they can pull up and down. And the moderator goes over the, um, the uh, uranium. Okay. So anyway, that's how the, the, uh, the center works. So imagine we have the control rod open. So there's lots of uranium. The uranium releases neutrons that release more uh, energy. This energy heats this uh, water or whatever liquid you want to use. So you see this orange part? Oops. Why do we use this liquid? Well, we, the uranium produces heat, so we want to take the heat. So what happens is you see the orange liquid, like water, usually water, this gets very hot. And then the, uh, the hot liquid goes to the right to cold water. Now, what happens when the hot pipe hits the cold water? Mm -hmm. It makes steam. So you see the steam goes up to the top. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And then the steam goes right. And then the steam turns the generator, which we did in fields. Remember, when you turn a magnet, uh, sorry, when you turn um, a conductor, inside the magnetic field, you get electricity. Remember this? So you get electricity. Then what happens is the water comes back down, the steam comes out of water, and uh, then the water is cooled back down, and it goes back in to start over. How might they cool the water down here? Well, usually what happens is something like ocean water goes in here, goes around the pipe and comes back out here. So this cold ocean water, when it hits the warm water from the generator, it cools it back down to, you know, like 15 Celsius. And then the pump pushes the water back in and the process starts over. So usually nuclear power plants are near a water supply like the ocean. So it uses the cold water from the ocean. Okay. So I think, you know, um, most nuclear plants are near our water supply. Although, I don't know what they do in France, because I think some of the nuclear power plants are in the mainland. Yeah. Maybe a dam. I would say it would have to be a dam. Yeah. So anyway, it's important that it's near um, a water supply. Okay, for questions? No. Long gone? Right. Now, I need you to draw this, but also... Um, 
you should write something to summarize the process, you know, like for example, um, uranium produces heat, heat heats the water, water becomes steam, steam pushes the turbine, turbine produces electricity, ocean water cools the steam back to cold water and it goes over again. Okay. So I'll give you a minute to draw and write something here. Well, okay, a couple of minutes. So please don't forget the word moderator. It was, it's not on the picture, moderator. Yes, moderator. Molten uh, sodium means like liquid sodium.
We're seeing some interesting pictures. Okay, continue, not just okay. Yeah? Yeah. Show me what you got. Okay, so you might be, t I don't know if you thought about this, but if the cold water comes in, what do you do with the warm water that comes out? So actually a lot of towns that live near nuclear power plants, they get free hot water. Because this hot water is hot because the, the cold water was used to change the steam back into liquid water. So the nuclear power plant does not need this warm water that's coming out. So this warm water then goes to the towns. So um, yeah, you get free warm water if you live near a nuclear reactor. Huh? Well, I mean, if you live one kilometer from the reactor or ten kilometers from the reactor, it doesn't make much of a difference. If it blows up, you're dead either way. <laughs> but if you live one kilometer away from the reactor, at least you get free warm water. Uh, no, I don't think so. Sorry to tell you this. If, if it blows up, there's no, ch there's no chance for you. Uh, okay, so next now. What? Huh? X Men. X Men, yes. <laughs> now, um, nuclear fuel is a material that can be burned by fission or fusion to get nuclear energy. The most common 
fuels are uranium-235 and plutonium-239. So in your power plant, they use uranium-235 or plutonium-239. Um, the actions of mining, refining, purifying, using and ultimately disposing of nuclear fuel together makes up the nuclear fuel cycle. So, I mean, nuclear fuel, it's a whole process. The first start, part of it is um, you have to mine it. So I think Canada, no, sorry, Australia is one of the three big countries that have uh, mines where you can get uranium in the mines. But of course, the uranium is not sitting in the ground ready to use, like oil or coal. So you take the uh, rocks out of the mine and then you have to refine it. So this is where you take the uranium out from the rocks. Then you have to purify it, meaning there might be some impurities in the uranium, some foreign material, so you have to take this out. Then you have to use it. But then after you use the uranium, it's a dangerous material, so then you have to dispose of it uh, safely. Uh, so different countries do different things. So. In the UK, they have a plant at Sellafield, which tries to clean the fuel up. Uh, in France, what they do is they put the used fuel into concrete and bury it underneath the ocean floor. So there's different strategies to deal with the waste that you get from the nuclear power plant. Um, in nuclear engineering, uh, a neutron moderator is used to reduce the fast neutrons. So this is what I was talking about earlier. And um, what did I say the moderator is usually made of? Carbon. Something like carbon. Uh, so what happens here is the moderator um, reduces the speed of the neutron so that there's less reactions taking place. Um, you, if you want, you can write something down I think it's enough just to write this down for what a moderator is. So in, uh, a neutron moderator reduces the speed of neutrons. And it's usually something like... Uh, uh, in fact, I think it's usually something like um, graphite. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in particular. But carbon comes in many different forms. Uh, so I think graphite is what's used. Yes, I know graphite. <laughs> but, car but carbon comes in many different forms. For example, KJ, you are one form of carbon <laughs> since you are a carbon life form, but you are quite different to graphite, and I don't think you would make a good moderator if I put you in a nuclear <laughs> reactor. <laughs> you can try that. I could try it. It either will end badly, or with KJ having super X-Men powers. Yes, I super. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to give you an X-Men type of name. Mm -hmm. I, I do like the sound of moderator. The moderator. So, um, do you have a moderator? There is no application. No, 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 no. So, we have now control rod. So, the control rod, you don't need to write this down because you have it from the picture. What does the control rod do? It moves the moderator over the uranium. And that's really it. So, it's literally like the lever that you pull to drop the moderator over the uh, uranium. So there's nothing special about that. So we talked about um, nuclear fission. This is when the uranium splits into two, for example, like barium and kryptonite. But you have this other process called fusion. So fusion, wait, wait, no, don't draw anything just yet. Understand what fusion is. Fusion is when you have two atoms and you smash them together until they stick to form a new atom. So in this example, 
you have uh, deuterium. Deuterium is uh, one, yeah, it's an isotope of hydrogen. It's one proton and one neutron. And you also have, have you done this one in chemistry? What is it? Tritanium? Yeah, and this one has one proton and two neutrons. So if you fire these two hydrogen atoms together, they could stick. So what happens when you have something which is um, one proton and one neutron, one proton and two neutrons, they stick together. How many protons do you have? Two. So what's that? Helium. So if these manage to stick together, what you'll get is helium, two protons and two neutrons. There's another name for this, two protons and two neutrons, an alpha particle. So you'll get an alpha particle, and you'll get a neutron, and you'll get energy. So this is a different way to make a nuclear reaction. Rather than breaking uranium into two, you could take two atoms, like hydrogen isotope and hydrogen isotope, and smash them together until they stick to form helium. This helium will also have a free neutron and some energy. This is nuclear fusion, as an example. Yep? How do you like, make this reaction? Like yeah, how can you get them to smash together? So one thing that they do is um, they would have the deuterium and tritanium in um, gas form. And then what they do is they, um, because these are protons, you know that um, when a charge moves in a magnetic field, it feels a force. Do you remember the formula? F equals QBB. Mm -hmm. So what they can do is they can use a big magnet to keep the gas contained in like a ball. You know what I mean? So you have the hydrogen gas. There's a magnet around the hydrogen gas to keep it in a ball shape. Mm -hmm. And then they fire lasers at the gas. When it heats up, what happens to the molecules? They start to move faster because there's more kinetic energy, because there's more heat. If you can get them moving fast enough when they strike into each other, they'll form helium. This is exactly what happens in the sun. The sun is a hydrogen helium gas. What's pulling the hydrogen together to form helium is the huge gravity of the sun. So the sun's gravity is pulling everything to the center. So when the hydrogen comes into the center, it uh, collides and forms helium and releases energy. So this is what's happening in the sun. Uh, nuclear fusion. This process is 100% safe. There is no chain reaction like in the last example. This process only continues as long as the laser is are turned on. If you turn the lasers off, then it stops. So nuclear fusion is 100% safe. Therefore, I think it's likely in the next 20 or maybe 50 years that we'll start having power plants that use nuclear fusion. At the moment, no power plant uses it. Yeah. The reason is it's extremely difficult to hold the hydrogen in a ball around the magnetic field and to have the lasers fire at it and to heat them up. You know, like it's a very difficult thing to actually do because the hydrogen gas wants to leak out. It's difficult to contain it. This is one of the one of many reasons that makes the process difficult, you know. Yeah, how did you like like a little bit Huh? A little bit. Oh yeah, no, this has been done. Uh, but the problem is it's difficult to keep it running 24 7. So the first time it was done, it only lasted two seconds and then the gas collapsed. But I think at the moment you can have pa um, some experiments are able to keep this process running for um, a couple of days. But eventually, you know, the gas leaks out or something goes wrong, you know. It's still being developed. But it, ha it's like it is, you know, it does happen. Um, I think there is a joint project between Japan, Europe and America 
to build the first fusion power plant. Where? Now the other thing that makes this process really, really good is that there's no waste. These hydrogen become helium. Helium it's just helium's completely safe, you know? Like you use it in your balloons. Right? Not like the last example where you have to bury the fuel under the ocean. Here the helium can just be put into a tank and sold to fill up balloons. But helium becomes carbon. And helium becomes carbon? Mm. Uh, how would helium become carbon? <laughs> Oh yeah, okay. This process, no, no. This process, <laughs> this process here is much simpler than what happens in the sun. In fact, what happens in the sun is twelve different reactions. I don't think you want to see them. Uh, in the, if you look at Wikipedia, you can see the nuclear reactions that take place in the sun. There's like twelve different reactions, and you're right. One of them, I think, will produce something like carbon. Uh, this is the simplest one I could find to explain the concept that you have hydrogen that becomes helium. Yeah. No, no, you're right that the sun produces other material other than helium, but it's mostly helium. You're not going to find too much carbon. Um, okay, so this, can you write this down? This is fusion, and this is where two atoms combine to form a, you can draw it as well, a new atom. A new atom. The example is two isotopes of hydrogen fuse to form a, a helium. Why are you studying chemistry and physics? Why are you studying chemistry and physics? I don't know, that's, you have to tell me that. Because you want to do engineering, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so? <laughs> oh no, 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 this is physics, not chemistry. You wouldn't do this in chemistry. This one here? It's just a free neutron. Um, no, no, it'd be pretty fast. These, these Helium and neutron particles will be quite fast. No. Well, I mean, these, no, these are going extremely fast, um, so they would burn through most materials. This is why you have to keep this in a magnetic field, because you couldn't put it into any container, because it would melt through any container. So you couldn't put this gas in a steel box because when the process takes place there's so much heat produced that it will just melt the box. So it would have to be held in a magnetic field because no <coughs> container could withstand the heat. It's like saying what could you put around the sun to block it in. You can't, it will just melt straight in. Yeah. How do you know it? Yeah, good, good question. How do you get the heat from the magnetic field? So what they do then is they usually pump something like a, something like a lithium gas. So this lithium gas will be pumped around the um, around the outside of the uh, gas here, and this lithium gas will heat up. So this lithium gas acts like a buffer. So this hot helium and hydrogen would heat up the lithium, and then the lithium would heat up the water. But you couldn't put the water directly in contact with the hydrogen and helium because it would be too much, it would be too hot. You know, it would instantly just change into steam and the pipe that it's in would melt away, you know. But what the lithium goes in and it wraps around it, it's called a lithium blanket. And this lithium blanket gets hot and then this lithium blanket would touch some steel pipes with water in it, you know. Uh, and then if the lithium gets too hot, I suppose you can just take the lithium out and pump in some uh, cooler lithium. Yeah. Uh, 
and then when the old lithium cools back down, you can put it back in. You know, or some process like this. You know, it's not something that's been perfected yet. It's still being worked on. Yeah. Whereas with the other example, you can just have the pipe directly around the uh, reactor. Because of the moderator, it can reduce the heat if you need it to. Yeah. There's no problem. In fact, if the uranium touches the water, there's no problem. No, it's not that bad actually, as long as it doesn't mix around in the water, it's kind of okay. Yeah. In fact, when the uh, when the power plant, um, uh, so the reason you have power plant disasters is because the control rod gets jammed. So the control rod, the the top of the rod might melt, and then they cannot pull the rod over the uranium. So the uranium gets hotter and hotter and hotter until uh, the plant might explode. So in this situation, what they do is they uh, dump ocean water into the reactor. So the reactor back here, this is why you must have it near a water supply for safety because what would happen is, where's it going? If this moderator becomes jammed and it cannot stop the reaction taking place, this core will get too hot. Uh, there's an emergency door here that opens up and the tank gets flooded with um, ocean water and then there's a hole at the bottom here where the hot ocean water comes out so what you do is you let ocean water in the top and out the bottom and you're trying to cool the reactor down because if the reactor gets too hot it will explode this is what happens so this is what they did in Japan you know well, what you have to do is you have to just keep putting in ocean water until the reactor cools back down. And then when it cools down, then you send in the hazmat team. Uh, and they have to go in and try to repair the damage and put the moderator back down. You know? So, uh, yeah, they might have to go in and put a temporary moderator around the fuel rod, or they might have to remove the fuel rod or something like this. Uh, but if there's a problem you need to try and cool the reactor down, you can do this by dumping ocean water in it. But like the problem you know, in Japan or uh, uh, in Chernobyl or other places, um, is that if you don't cool it down quick enough, then there will be an explosion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so these are very dangerous. They are very dangerous. Whereas the last one here, <coughs> the one we don't use, it's very safe. But this will probably change in my lifetime and your lifetime. You know, I really think the next 20 to 50 years we'll start seeing power plants that use fusion instead of fission. Yeah. This is clean, doesn't produce any waste. Um, hydrogen and helium are, hydrogen is something very easy to get. You can take it from water. You know, so I mean, it's really this is probably what energy will look like in the future, a hundred years from now. It'll be fusion. Yeah. My new body find that out. Get over it, Doctor Adam. <laughs> <laughs>